everybody, this is Nia Fyla, and I'm here with a weekly astrological message. It's a bit more than a weekly message as <clears throat> I'm talking about celestial movements, the buildup of energies and the, the, the breakup of energies in the sky. So sometimes I'm talking about periods that are longer than a week. Uh, you get more information and I get to share with you how the movements of the sky build up or decrease. So. I'm going to talk about a bit more than a week today. I'm going to take you until the, let's say, the 22nd of September. And we begin the 9th, the 10th of September are heavy days emotionally. It touches on very personal spots. And <clears throat> there's a weight and a sadness in the air somehow that demands practicality and maturity and concentrating on things that are actually strategically good for us, building our lives. It is time for new connections. It is time for disconnections. It is time f that sometimes we could be, it could be emotional disruptions, also on the 11th, as the moon is opposing Uranus. It could be a time that there are changes in our most intimate surroundings interruptions <clears throat> in the relationships with our parents or children or people that have been like family to us sometimes this is a disconnection that implies a movement forward and that's not necessarily a bad thing I just want you to make sure that you're not throwing babies away with bath waters this isn't a time that we have you know um, a very long fuse don't let your temper rule you. This is a time of exaggeration when it comes to emotions. The 11th is the moon is squaring um, Jupiter on that day. There is an intense energy in the air that gives us the sense that we could do things ourselves right now. That we could actually improve our lives. That we have the ability to cope with whatever is coming as we head on to the 12th and the 13th. The 13th itself is an emotionally intensive day. It is a day to watch out from moodiness and being too drawn um, by our surroundings. And it's a good day to be practical and put on limits and barriers and not let yourself be too influenced by the surroundings. What I'm talking about is a T-square between the moon squaring the sun that is opposed by Neptune squaring the moon as well. And as we go on to the 14th, the day after, the sun and Neptune are at exact opposition. What did that means astronomically, and if you understand it astronomically, you'll be able to better at understand it astrologically as well is that Neptune is facing at its, at its closest approached, approach to Earth. Its distance is <clears throat> vastly decreased than the usual average distance it has from Earth. So this is the time that astronomers put up their big telescopes and take pictures of Neptune. And then powerful uh, telescope, it's the best time to see Neptune. Regular telescope, beautiful blue dot all through the evening. Naked eye. Well, I don't know what the light pollution is and how good is your eyesight. <laughs> but generally speaking, you know, and energetically speaking, you know, this is the time that the sun's rays are directly um, facing Neptune and its rays of the sun are reflected by its surface to Earth. So Neptune's energy, illuminated by the sun, is felt intensely on Earth. So this is a time that we could feel again like we're a dot on a screen, that we're a drop in the water, that we're a teardrop in the rain, you know, that we are not in control of circumstances and occurrences and developments that are much bigger and stronger and unforeseen and we have absolutely no control over. This is a time that we could be drawn and influenced, that we could be more naive, that we could be 
more utopic that we could want to disconnect from the harsh cruelness of reality and just go into a good book or a good play or a good movie record into ourselves in our private world nevertheless this is a time of intense imagination intense creativity it's an amazing time for spiritual connection it is a time for collective action understanding the responsibility that the drop has in the ocean as part of the current currents as part of the current currents that build up the waves that shape the shores we live on and indeed what a noble and vast responsibility we have so this could be an amazingly spiritual and creative and artistic time as well and whether we draw our energy to the movie and the play and the recoiling or to the art to the art and the spirit or the connectiveness with nature which is also Neptune we have to remind ourselves to keep our boundaries to keep a sensible practical look on things because this is definitely a time that we could lose that string attached to the kite that we might be um, as we head on to the 16th, the 15th, and 15th is in, we need to watch our uh, communication and interaction with others on that day, especially emotional reactions that cause us to speak a certain way or react a certain way within our close environment as the moon is squaring Mercury. And the 16th is intense as the moon is conjunct Pluto on that day. So take a step away from your emotion just watch your emotions let them you know in, inquire why we react the way we do and I just want to mention that we are you know generally speaking we are deeply in the shadow already of the mercury retrograde coming at the end of this month and this is a, a mercury retrograde that bears a lot of very powerful signatures of transformation both self transformation and you know um, social transformation through new understandings epiphanies you know it's like discovering that algorithm that was hidden underneath our consciousness and our subconscious and making us react in certain ways and go into certain interactions and create certain scenarios in our lives and since we understand that it doesn't compel us as it did before it doesn't have the power it did over us once consciousness slipped in you know these shackles were unbound and you're free to act in a different way so it's a time that promotes transformation and also Mercury what I was talking about is Mercury squaring Pluto many times through the cycle of the retrograde coming on us and I also want to mention that Mercury is opposed by Chiron and that's something that that's a signature that's also going to come back through the retrograde several times so we are already in this energy and this is a great time for endearing communication for understanding that we ourselves and others are all you know scratched a little and to be more sensitive to those scratches given to us by life both to our own scratches if you may and to the ones of others and really work towards healing and and mending social ties at this time and as I said endearing communication sensitive communication healing communication because this is also a time that harsh words intense words and cruel words could be spoken so try not to be on that side and even if someone is this way towards you don't answer that with more fire I'm talking from experience <laughs> so as we're heading into the 17th we have the Sun trining Pluto this is a very intensely intense energy promoting both personal transformation Georgia don't do that to my chair. Don't do that to my chair. Bad cat. 
You see what she's doing? No, it's off camera. Take it off. Take it off. Don't do that ever again. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so on the 17th, we have the sun trining Pluto. That's a signature that promotes personal transformation. It's a very intense energy that puts us in touch with whatever is happening inside. As I, you know, it's the same themes I was talking about and really enabling us to uh, it shed some light on it, some solar light on it, on that darkness of the Plutonian lava, emotional lava, and free ourselves from that complexity free ourselves from that um, compulsion nevertheless it is also a sexual time it is also a time that we require more intense experiences in our lives so be careful from exaggeration on that day as well we have Venus along with I'm sorry Venus squaring Saturn and the moon so that in a sense gives us a whole new shed darker shed to that day and you know these are both signatures that we could feel a few days before and a few days after and when Venus squares Saturn you know especially if the moon is there on that day but also you know as the square is building and diminishing when Venus squares Saturn all Venusian uh, subjects which are our self-pride and esteem the relationship we have with ourselves our self-value and definitely the value that we can offer whether it's money estates you know our lands our material goods the relationship we have with money in our lives and the relationship we have with others on all forms of relationship all the shades All of these come into scrutiny, into judgment. And Saturn, as a judge, doesn't care what we feared or what we hoped for. It shows us what is. As they say in Zen Buddhism, the so-ness of things, they are so. And by understanding and acknowledging how things are, we are able to change them, to transmute them. It is a time that definitely if we have sown well, we will reap. We will get the establishment and the rank that we hoped for. But if our relationships do not stand up to the trial of time, if the relationship we have with our body, with ourselves or with money, needs mending this is a time that that would surface and as we head on to the 18th much lighter energy the 19th lighter energy good energy positive energy in the sky the 20th I think is a full moon and then the 22nd is the autumnal equinox in the northern hemisphere and then spring equinox in the southern hemisphere and it's a magical time always has been in any type of religion or faith it's a portal time and especially this year it's going to be both intense and magical and transformative so it feels sacred and it definitely feels much lighter and less frustrating than the earlier time of September that we are in now so as we head on to that spiritual and energetic build-up this is the time I hope that you know this information would prove useful to you I have 35 percent off right now on all the readings and all private lessons and courses with me as uh, the Delta COVID strain hits the world so you're free to contact me all the details are at the ending screen this is Nia Feiler wishing us all that we may live long and prosper. Amen.